In the not too distant future, nuclear wars have completely destroyed Earth, making life there all but impossible. In order to provide a base for future colonies, a group of colonists is dispatched to the moon. Since the colonization effort fails, they open mines to extract as much resources from the moon as they can. Miners are required to work for 20 years, before being given the opportunity to travel to Omega, a planet where civilization is now thriving. It is necessary to place tourists in cryosleep, because the journey takes 75 years, a half century has passed since humans first set foot on the moon, giving birth to a large number of kids, who are tired of going about their daily lives in the mines. There are numerous reports about a weird object, that impacted with the moon, in the year 2257 and produced a crater, but no one is allowed to approach near it. One day, a bunch of kids try to steal a rover from the hangar to get out of the mines, they hide behind furniture whenever an adult walks by. But they quickly emerge to continue debating how to proceed, Dylan tries to activate the rover by touching something, but instead he unintentionally triggers an alert, Caleb considers the tiny capsule he is holding, while everyone else is arguing, he wonders how they got here, Caleb will be taken to Omega, where he will be adopted by a new family, after it finds out that his father has passed away, and that he no longer has any family, because his mother died seven years ago, he will still be a child when he comes because of cryosleep, Caleb is reluctant to leave because all of his friends are present, but his objections are disregarded, and he is told that he will depart in three days. Once an approaching meteor shower has passed, Caleb is reminded of a day when his father, Michael, told him not to be afraid of the really tall ladders near the base, together, they climb one, and as they look up at the sky, Michael tells Caleb about the stars, and how even though his family has passed away, they are still with them in spirit. He also expresses the desire for Caleb to see the crater, before he passes away. With sheer nostalgia, Caleb goes back to that location, where he is soon joined by his closest pals Dylan, Borny, and Marcus. They are saddened to learn that Caleb will be leaving them soon, but they are also aware of his father's dying request, so Dylan suggests that they go on one last adventure together. By leaving the base and visiting the crater, Caleb is visited by an officer who brings him, the tiny capsule containing Michael's ashes. After they first steal a number of helpful gadgets for the journey, the boys realize during lunch that, they will require base passcodes to leave. Dylan makes the choice to talk to Addison, a young woman who has no friends, because she recently moved from Earth and everyone finds her strange. She has access to the codes, because her father is a member of the science team. Dylan goes after Addison and reveals his true intentions, after his clumsy approach causes her to flee, Addison agrees to acquire the boys the codes, as long as she may accompany them, as she, too, is in search of excitement and jealous of the lad's bond, rewinding to the present, Caleb disconnects a cable from the rover to silence the alarm shortly, before lockdown is declared, the children can now board the car, and Dylan takes the wheel, since he is the only one who is familiar with it, Caleb enters the code that Addison gave them, as she decorates the panel with a tiny astronaut bobblehead, claiming it is an Earth tradition, as the gang travels along a lengthy corridor and eventually emerges outside, Caleb reflects on his father's parting words, where they receive their first glimpse of the lunar world, after pausing to take in the scene, and for Marcus to take his heart medication. They continue on the road and soon come across a huge building that, while being abandoned, looks stunning. This is a structure, that is still standing from the failed human attempt to colonize the moon. According to Caleb, who says that Michael told him about it, Humanity completely lost interest in the moon after Omega was discovered, turning it into this gloomy place, since it only lasts for 20 years and then you get to leave, Addison doesn't see the big deal, but she is the daughter of a higher up, and is unaware of the reality of the situation, any minor error they make, like arriving late or getting sick, would extend their contract, and if someone passes away before their 20 years are up, their next of kin would have to complete, the rest of their years alongside their own. Everything is a trap to keep the families employed here indefinitely, Addison apologizes for being impolite and attempts to make amends, by telling the guys stories about Earth, describing things like trees, the sky, and the ocean, they halt the rover after some time has passed, and don suits before taking a stroll, the males are astounded by how attractive Addison is, because she has a nicer suit and comes from a higher position, as soon as they exit the car, they start playing about with gravity, and loving how high they can jump, they also get their first glimpse of Earth, and they are taken aback by how blue it appears. Addison is motivated to instruct the boys in baseball after seeing Earth. They substitute stones and sticks for normal equipment. But when a rock is hit, gravity causes it to fly too far. A frustrated Addison decides to take a break. When the boys fail to grasp the idea of sprinting through the bases, she reaches up, nearly in tears, as if she could grab Earth in her hand. Filled with nostalgia for her former home, she looks around as she suddenly hears a commotion, and sees the guys utilizing an oxygen tank to fly ensuring they are attached to the rover with a cable, while gravity and the evacuation of the tank propels them upward. Dylan persuades Addison to join by making her seem to be a coward. 
Despite the fact that she believes this is a risky concept that wastes oxygen, soon everyone is having fun together, competing to reach higher by taking turns, it's enjoyable for a while, but when Borny's time rolls around again, his cable snaps, causing him to start floating aimlessly, in an effort to aid their pal, the youngsters scramble to acquire more oxygen tanks, and use them to go as well, before they start crashing into each other, there is a lot of wacky floating, since they can't really control their direction, this colliding enables them to grab onto each other, and gather enough weight to fall back to the ground, they don't know if they can make it to the crater at this point, because they've wasted so much oxygen, but Caleb notes that they might be able to find more, at an old outpost from the previous settlement, because he has heard from his brother that the outpost is rife with ghosts, Borny despises the concept, in response to Dylan calling him out, and calling Borny's brother a loser, Borny makes fun of Dylan's family, this starts a fight, which Marcus tries to break up but ends up joining, in the midst of the chaos, Caleb screams and warns them that, this is not how they should spend their final days together, the boys make amends and get along again, when they do reach the outpost, the interior is completely dark, they scream in terror as they move into a corridor, and suddenly notice some human figures, but as they switch on the lights, they learn it's just a collection of mannequins, Addison observes that this isn't an outpost, rather, it's a residence designed to serve as an example, of what they would construct for the moon's colonization. Dylan explains to Addison that, his father ran away from everything as they'd taken their surroundings, explaining Borny's remark, when Caleb sees a mannequin, he can't help but think about his own father and the times, when he used to tell stories about his mother, the youngsters eventually discover oxygen tanks, and a ton of food in the storeroom and decide to stay there the night, after the meal, they light a fire and Addison tells them more legends about Earth, including all the lost cultures and religions, she also acknowledges that her parents separated, they will be in cryosleep for 75 years because her mother and brother went to Omega, and as a result, Addison is unable to communicate with her brother, when Borny hits a secret button, music suddenly begins to play, and they learn that the house is run by a main computer, Caleb realizes how unjust it is that so many lovely things, like art, were abandoned, the youngsters decide to start wrecking the house, when an outraged hatred for the system takes over their attitude, nothing escapes their attention, as they break everything but the main computer, engage in a pillow battle on the bed, and carelessly dash through every room of the house, later, while most males are asleep, Caleb joins Addison who is still awake, Dylan, according to him, is his closest friend, because he shared his food when Caleb didn't have any, he also worries about what may happen to Dylan after he's gone, Dylan's friend and supporter, Addison makes a commitment to Caleb that she will keep, after Caleb leaves, in the morning, the kids get back on the rover, but after a few hours of driving, the vehicle runs out of battery, while the boys argue about what to do, Addison sends out a distress signal, pointing out they have quite a few hours until, a rescue team comes because of locking up, this is enough time for them to go to the crater on foot, and return to be rescued later, the kids put on the suits again and walk for some time, until they finally reach the crater, which is huge, Caleb hopes Michael is proud of him, as he remembers Michael and the promise his father made to him, to visit the crater someday, when they look inside, they're shocked to find a glowing structure surrounded by strange pillars, one of these pillars includes a sentence that states, the past is never far away, additionally, a door on the floor suddenly opens, allowing the children to descend stairs into an airy hallway, they eventually stumble upon a room, that is comprised solely of a fake tree in the center of a black circle, and some writing about skies left behind, when Addison realizes this is the right kind of room, she begins frantically banging on the walls, until a panel slides open to reveal a button, when she pushes it, a white light surrounds the space, and the boys are abruptly taken to earth, where they see nature for the first time, and marvel at how blue the sky is, even though moving around and touching objects reveals that everything is only a hologram, they still find the experience to be amazing, the hologram abruptly ends as Caleb removes the panel, revealing his mother's ashes and a picture of his parents, he also discovers a star on the floor, when Caleb realizes what Michael really wanted, he takes the photo for himself, and scatters Michael's ashes next to those of his wife, Caleb is now extremely upset because the moon is still his true home, and he does not want to leave, however Dylan points out that everyone's dream is to leave this garbage hole, and have a good life in Omega, so Caleb shouldn't waste it, without a doubt, his father would not have wanted him to, Marcus collapses suddenly because he is ill, it turns out that being outside lowers his blood pressure, the group helps him leave the building so they can go fetch his medicine, but when they make it outside, they discover the meteor shower has finally started, Caleb gives Borny some encouragement after he expresses his fear, and soon everyone is sprinting under the shower, while carrying Marcus and dodging meteors that are falling all around them, the boys move quickly and arrive at the rover in a matter of minutes, but Addison is forced to hide behind a rock, after falling due to a meteor that strikes too close to her, when the boys learn she's missing, Borny remains behind to give Marcus his medicine at the rover, while Caleb and Dylan head back to rescue Addison, 
Dylan is struck by a meteorite and is unconscious when they arrive at her. Luckily the suits come with a repair gun and they seal the fractures in Dylan's helmet. Before they begin running again, they are too close to the meteors, and Caleb slips while carrying Dylan, Addison picks him up, and they safely make it to the rover. Unfortunately, they find that the window was also shattered by a meteor, so they must now rely on the scant oxygen in their suits. The kids go to sleep as they wait for the oxygen to run out, because they don't think anyone will arrive due to the meteor shower, meaning they will at least perish together. Dylan awakens a short while later, and the two of them come to terms with Caleb leaving before, he passes out due to the lack of air, he closes his eyes and firmly believes that, he can hear approaching footsteps, when Caleb finally wakes up some time later, he is heartbroken to learn that he has already been transferred to Omega, without having the chance to say goodbye to his friends, he discovers Addison's bobblehead and a photo of his parents in his backpack, a nurse also offers him a digital player, because his friends have been messaging him for the past 75 years, Caleb listens to each person to learn more about their lives, in an effort to strengthen the contracts for the miners, Addison staged a strike while Marcus formed a baseball club, they were successful, and Borney was appointed chief administrator, eventually, Dylan and Addison got married, had children, and even had grandchildren, hearing their friends' voices change as they grew up, without him makes Caleb feel both happy and sad, he begins a new life on Omega, where a foster family adopts him right away, and provides for him. Caleb takes some time to adjust and make new acquaintances, but once he does, he sets out to find Addison's brother. When he locates him, he gives him the bobblehead and shares the messages with him, telling him all about the adventure they had that day on the moon. The end, if you like this story, please subscribe to the channel and like it to motivate me to bring you more stories like this.